Hi everyone, welcome to this class on chemical equations revision. So in this class we are going to be revising on how to write these chemical equations, uh, should we balance them, why do we balance them, so let's uh, take a revision of uh, mainly how to express these chemical equations, right? Changing word equations into chemical equations, that's the goal of this class and it is a very, very important topic in chemistry. So I want you guys to play co uh, pay close attention and keep your pen and paper ready. So let's begin. Before we get started, I just want to say, do check out the other courses on our website. You know, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for CBSE class 8, 9 and 10. So guys, if you haven't taken the other courses, do take them and do share it out with your friends. For the ICAC students, we have Physics, Chemistry, Biology and Maths for classes 8, 9 and 10. Once again, do take a look at the other courses and do share them out. And if you want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding. Both are great languages to learn computer programming. And we have Physics and Chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE, which is the International Board. So do share out our courses with your friends. Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So stay connected with Manocha Academy and keep learning. So the important thing is how to write chemical equations. For example, all of us know that this reaction, when you take hydrogen and oxygen and you burn them, what do you get? Water. So what do you call this kind of equation? Because it looks like an equation, hydrogen plus oxygen and in maths, we write equal to chemistry. Some books write equal to, but usually you put this arrow, water. So if you write it something like this, this is called a word equation because you have written it in words. So let's write that here. This is nothing but a word equation. But we are chemistry students. We don't want to write words. We want to express this as a chemical equation which means writing it in terms of symbols, in terms of the uh, molecules. And here one important concept to remember is whenever you convert from word equation to chemical equation, all the substances you are expressing it in terms of their molecules. Unless it is an ionic equation involving ions, that's a separate kind of equation. We're going to be focused on the basic equations where everything is a molecule. So what, I'm, what do I mean by that? A hydrogen molecule is reacting with oxygen molecule to form water molecules, okay? So how do you express a hydrogen molecule? We are not just talking about hydrogen, or its atom or ion, we are talking about hydrogen molecule. So hydrogen is an element or compound? It's an element. So for elements, when we write the molecular form, should we use atomicity or valency? We have revised this concept many times. So for elements, remember, you need to use atomicity. That means one molecule has how many atoms? So hydrogen, how do you guys write it in the equation? Can you guys tell me? Hydrogen is written as H2, not as H, because we know symbol of hydrogen is H, but we should write H2, because it is a diatomic gas. One molecule contains two atoms. So please be clear about this. Don't write it as 2H, H2. 2 comes as a subscript. Same with oxygen. Oxygen is an element, but in the equation, we do not just write the symbol. Our goal is to express the one molecule of oxygen. What about oxygen? Again, oxygen like hydrogen is a diatomic gas, which means one molecule of oxygen contains two atoms, so we need to write O2. Clear? And then you put this arrow here. And as a result of this, what do you get? Water. So hydrogen, oxygen combined to form water. Water, is it an element or compound? Water is a compound. So we must write, we must use valency for water. So water is a compound which contains hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen valency is, hydrogen valency is one, oxygen valency is two. That is why water is H2O, because you bring this two down here, the one down here. So that is why water is H2O, because valency of hydrogen one, oxygen is two. So we want to write one molecule of water like this. Can you guys see? So now we are getting close to our chemical equation, because we have converted our word equation into a chemical equation. 
and chemical equations are written in terms of these chemistry symbols that's why they look you know you're doing some science h2 plus o2 giving h2o this is just a simple word equation okay the concept for you to remember always is we are expressing the molecule so when we say this we are talking about hydrogen molecule oxygen molecules and water molecules some of you might be thinking why molecules why not atoms why not just write h plus o gives h2o because atom may or may not be stable but molecules are always stable this world exists in terms of molecules not in terms of atoms because atoms are highly reactive they end up combining their uh, they live only for a short time most of them right so that's why we want to write it in terms of molecules some molecules can be monoatomic like inert gases they have only one atom or metals but every time you have to think what is the molecule is it monoatomic diatomic for the elements and for compounds obviously you have to use valency okay so please be clear that equations of chemical equations are normally written in terms of molecules unless if you're writing ions now there's one last thing missing in this equation which is not right what is it very good just like you know parents say and teachers say live a balanced lifestyle similarly equations need to be balanced what do we mean by balancing equations if you look at them you can see there are two hydrogen the so this side is called the reactants the left side the right side is called products so on the reactant side you can see there are two hydrogen atoms product also we have two hydrogen so all good here but if you look at the oxygen on the reactant side you have two oxygen atoms but on the product side you have only one oxygen atom just o so where did one oxygen did it run out of the room where did it go we know that matter cannot you know disappear like that matter can neither be created nor destroyed so where has this oxygen atom gone so it's not that it's disappeared that is why we must balance equations to satisfy the law of conservation of mass is that clear so please make sure you guys balance your equations as well and this one is a simple one because oxygen is 2 over there so to balance it we multiply this side by 2 so see oxygen is balanced how many hydrogen do we have 2 times 2 is 4 so to balance this also we need to multiply it 2 here so now we have what we call a nice balanced chemical equation so please make sure you guys are clear about this simple example and you follow this in your mind you know it should go on i need to write molecules and every time you think is it an element for elements i'll use atomicity is it a compound for that i'll use valency and then make sure you remind yourself after finishing the equation you ask yourself the question is it balanced if not so check it you need to balance it and i've shown you how to balance chemical equations in case you guys miss those classes those videos are there please watch them so let's try a question if i ask you write the chemical equation for the reaction magnesium burnt in air and i want you to uh, i want to teach the tips and tricks where you can predict the equations yourself you don't have to memorize each one of them because there are thousands or like hundreds or thousands of equations in your book right you need to learn the techniques of how to predict it so here what do we have magnesium burning in air magnesium is a metal okay so and it's a highly reactive metal so when we burn it in air what's going to happen so we can say magnesium when it's burnt in air typically who's the gas it burns with oxygen so oxygen which comes from the air so we can say magnesium when it reacts with the oxygen from air this is going to be like a a combination reaction just like hydrogen and oxygen so magnesium and oxygen when they combine what are they going to form they're going to form a compound which is called magnesium oxide you might have guessed it right magnesium and oxygen they combine so let's write that magnesium oxide so again this is a word equation now you don't have to write the word equation and then convert it this is just to revise the concept this can go on in your mind you know magnesium plus oxygen what is it going to give me magnesium oxide so you don't have to write this word equation down every time now when you're writing the chemical equation start thinking magnesium who is it an element or a compound it's an element what is the symbol of magnesium put it down mg 
Now ask yourself, okay, this is an element. That means I have to use its atomicity. Is it monoatomic, diatomic, triatomic? Always ask yourself. Do not just write Mg and okay, I'm done. Let's move on. Your equation has to be 100% correct. So magnesium is a metal. What about metals? What is the atomicity? One simple rule is all metals are monoatomic or considered monoatomic, right? So we just write it as Mg, simple, monoatomic. Next, when we go to write oxygen, oxygen you should know the symbol is O. Again, ask yourself, monoatomic, diatomic, triatomic, what, what is the atomicity of this element? You know, two. That's why we are breathing in O2, not just O, because one molecule of oxygen contains two atoms, molecule of magnesium, just one atom. Clear? Now you put this arrow. Now what do we have here? Magnesium oxide, element or compound. Always, this should go on in your brain. If you do chemistry this way, you'll start finding, you'll tell your friends chemistry is easy. Otherwise, you know what is the reaction with chemistry book? Oh my God, it's so difficult. What are all these symbols? They keep changing because you're not learning the rules. You're just going equation by equation. Don't do that. That's what I want to teach in today's class. So magnesium oxide, it's a compound. Compound, will you use atomicity or valency? Atomicity or valency? Valency. Compounds, we use valency, combining capacity of an element with other elements. So magnesium oxide, what will be the formula? So you can do this in rough or in your mind. Magnesium oxide, magnesium valency 2, oxygen valency 2. Everybody learn your valency and atomicity. Do it now, not one day before the exam or one hour before the exam. People are doing that. Please don't do it. Okay, so valency is 2 and 2. Now we do the crisscross, exchange the numbers. So what will you get? Mg2O2. But there is a common factor of 2, 2, 2 will cancel. So final formula is MgO. Some of you will tell, why are we doing all this? We remember the formula. No, check your valency, question yourself. That way you won't make careless mistakes, okay? So this is the right equation. We have converted our word equation into chemical equation. So are we done? Lead a balanced life, check the balancing. So what is the balancing? One magnesium atom, magnesium, balanced. Oxygen, two atoms, only one atom. So oxygen is not balanced clearly, okay? You could do a half here fraction, but better you multiply this simple one by two here, two oxygen and two oxygen here. So we'll have to put a magnesium two also. Is this clear? So this is how we write our balanced equation. Sometimes, you know, they will also say plus heat and light because magnesium on burning gives this white dazzling flame. It's used in firecrackers. So sometimes, you know, in your school, they'll teach you to write also plus heat and light. Sometimes you might see this heat symbol over here because it reacts when burning it, right? So you're heating it here as well. So either you can use triangle for heat or write the word heat. So all these based on your school. Another important thing is sometimes writing the physical state of each and every substance. So magnesium, what is the physical state? Usually all metals are solid except mercury, which is a liquid. So you can write in bracket S for solid. Oxygen, what is it? All of you know, oxygen's normal state is gas. How about MgO, magnesium oxide? What is your guess here? Solid, liquid or gas? What is the physical state? There's another state called aqueous, which means dissolved in water. Here, there's no water involved. So magnesium oxide, normally metal oxides, they are solids. So we'll write solid here in bracket S, right? So these, if you, are, if you have been taught in school to write physical states or your chemistry teacher says you must mention them, then please follow that, okay? So is this equation clear to all of you how to write this chemical equation? Let's try another one. Write the chemical equation for this reaction. See here I've given you the reaction. Iron plus hydrochloric acid gives ferrous chloride plus hydrogen. So it's mentioned in words or suppose you were just given this part. Then what do you do? Iron is a metal. So iron is Fe. Again, it's an element or, and all metals are monoatomic. So I don't have to write Fe1. Just Fe is enough, right? So one molecule contains one atom plus hydrochloric acid. This guy is definitely a compound of hydrogen and chlorine. So hydrogen and chlorine, hydrogen valency one, chlorine valency one. So if you do the crisscross, you get HCl. So let's write that here. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. Then you put the arrow. So suppose the reaction wasn't given and you had to predict it. When metals react with this acid, what happens is, what type of reaction takes place? This metal wants to kick out hydrogen. 
because iron is more reactive than hydrogen remember reactivity series if you guys have studied it so iron sort of displaces hydrogen this is a displacement reaction he says you get out i want to be with chlorine i want to be friends with chlorine so what is formed is ferrous chloride now iron irritatingly it has two valencies uh, two and three ferrous is two ferric is three so ferrous chloride will be what it's a compound so we use valency FeCl2 valency 2 chlorine valency 1 plus hydrogen hydrogen is a gas so hydrogen and it's a diatomic gas so we write H2 so very good this is a single displacement reaction absolutely and we have got the reaction right if you want to write the physical states iron it's a metal so obviously it's going to be solid some of these are easy hydrochloric acid what will be the state here solid liquid gas what should i put here what do you guys think what should be the physical state for hydrochloric acid so a lot of you are thinking liquid state but liquid is not the right answer there is a fourth state so there is solid liquid gas i was tricking you there is another state called aq because all acids are dissolved in water aq means something dissolved in water okay so that is a special state of liquid where if something is dissolved in water we write aqua state so we do not write aq here you guys should write uh, we do not write liquid here you should write aq because hydrochloric acid is dissolved in water clear then you have ferric chloride okay now what is the state of ferric chloride ferric chloride is a salt like sodium chloride so here we have to use uh, we have to have this knowledge that is it soluble in water in fact all chlorides are soluble except mesyl mercury silver lead okay so this is again going to be dissolved in water so aq if you don't have these states you don't have to worry about it right uh, so this is dissolved in water but suppose it was not soluble in water then we write solid or we put a precipitate saying that it will settle down but this guy is soluble so we don't do that and hydrogen obviously we know it, hydrogen gas bubbles will come out the bubbles will come out so there's our equation all done all good balance okay check your balancing sometimes it can be balanced so iron you can see is balanced chlorine is not and hydrogen is not so if i simply multiply by two i think i'm going to get my equation right so these are the important things to keep in mind and if you do it in a systematic manner then you will not have to be doing, you know, Fe plus 2 HCl gives FeCl2 plus H2. You won't have to memorize all this because you are learning the patterns and the rules. Clear? Let's try another one. Write the chemical equation for heating of ferrous sulfate. Now, if you don't know this reaction or if you have not read it, don't worry about it. But again, whenever you are seeing reactions, you should try to see how to predict the answer. So here, what do we have? We have heating of ferrous sulfate. So who is ferrous sulfate? It is clearly a compound of ferrous, iron and sulfate. So what will be the formula? Ferrous again valency 2, sulfate SO4 valency 2. So if you guys do the crisscross, what will you get? Fe2 SO4 whole twice. But we know that 2, 2 it will get cancelled out because you can divide by 2. So the final formula is going to be simply Fe SO4 and we don't need the brackets because the number 2 is not there, right? It's simply 1. Ferrous sulfate. And clearly the question says heating. So we're going to put the heat symbol here. Now when you heat ferrous sulfate, this is where you have to do some learning. Because some of you might think it will decompose into ferrous and sulfate. But those are just ions. So what happens is some of the, the sulfur part comes out of this compound. So it is undergoing thermal decomposition or breakdown. So what's going to happen is it's going to give you ferric oxide. Ferric oxide is Fe2O3. So iron with valency 3, oxygen with valency 2. Then it's going to give you sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. So these kind of difficult equations will definitely be given in your book because there are so many reactions. You can't expect to know all of them. Some you can easily predict. This one is that, you know, difficult case where you need to know, okay, ferrous sulfate is changing into a ferric oxide and giving two more oxides. So you can remember that oxygen is there in all the products here. And then if you are asked to write the states of matter, you need to do that. So normally the salts, if they are not dissolved in water, they are simply in solid state. Can you predict this one? Ferric oxide, what do you think the state will be? 
it's a metal oxide. We said usually metal oxides are solid. So this is going to be a solid. Sulfur dioxide is like carbon dioxide. It's a gas. And same for this guy. Sulfur trioxide is a gas. Okay. So you can write the states below or usually it's written to the right of the substance. So this is our full equation. See. Now the last thing left is balancing. So please check the balancing. So balancing you can use you know. Always I suggest what are the methods I taught you. Hit and trial. I taught you the table method and the difficult, you know, if equations get very difficult, there's a ABCD method which sort of converts it into maths equations and helps you solve it very fast. But uh, you should always probably try hit and trial. Once you're familiar with balancing, try to quickly balance it. You know, hit and trial is mentally just by looking at left and right hand side, try to balance it. If things get complicated, rather than doing table, if it's very complicated, you should do the ABCD method or for some of the very complicated ones, you can even memorize a couple of equations, uh, five or 10 equations before the exam or during your revision so that you can quickly write it because some are difficult to balance. It takes time. So it's just a time saving tactic, but definitely don't sit and learn each and every balancing. It's a waste of time. So now what do we do here? You can see there is iron is two here. It is only one. So let's multiply by two. We can start with the easy things. Sulfur, you can see 1 plus 1, 2, 2 times 1, 2. How many oxygen we have on the reactant side, on the left hand side? 4 times 2, 8 oxygen. How many guys on this side, right side? 3 plus 2 plus 3. If you add that up, we are getting 8. So this is an easy way to remember this equation that is balancing is very easy. You just double the left hand side, you are all done. But in equation, you have to get each and every formula correct. Otherwise, one small mistake and they will mark it wrong. Yes, what is the type of reaction here? So you can see that there is only one reactant and many products. So when you have many products, it is definitely decomposition. And we also add a special adjective. It is thermal decomposition because due to heat. So sometimes you can also write it as thermal decomposition. So this reaction is definitely thermal decomposition. Similarly, they can ask you, you know, type of this reaction like we had discussed. Uh, one element iron is displacing hydrogen. So this is a single displacement reaction. So this one is single displacement. And how about the type for this one? So you can say this reaction, it gives off heat. It is exothermic, but types usually we mean combination, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement, sometimes redox. So this one is because you have only one product. This is clearly a combination reaction. So sometimes they can ask you the type of reaction as well. Next question, write the chemical equation for the reaction of heating of lead nitrate. And I've given these examples because they're very common in the exam, very popular questions. So we should revise these important equations. So lead nitrate, what is the heating? So you take lead nitrate, PbNO3. Lead actually has two valencies, you know, two and four, but the common valency is two. And nitrate valency is one, so it's going to be PbNO whole three. And you put bracket two, because nitrate two times. So we have to put the bracket for the whole thing, okay? So this is lead nitrate. When you guys heat it, what's going to happen? So you can put heat symbol or triangle symbol, or you can write heat. Again, there is going to be decomposition, only one reactant, it is going to break down. So what happens is it loses the nitrogen and it becomes lead oxide. Again, valency 2, oxygen valency 2. Then you have, it releases nitrogen dioxide and then oxygen gas. So some of these reactions you have to learn because you have to know how it breaks up because you may ask why not nitrogen monoxide or nitrogen, you know, pentoxide or trioxide or whatever. So you have to learn that it breaks down into lead oxide, NO2 and oxygen. Again, you can see oxygen is present in all the three substances which are formed. So this is our reaction. We can write down the states of matter. So lead nitrate, what do you think is going to be the state of matter here? So it is containing a metal and non-metal. So it's like a salt, like sodium chloride, sodium nitrate. So salts are usually solids. We are not taking it under water or dissolving it in water. So we don't have to write aqueous. It's a solid salt. Lead oxide, you guys can guess. Metal oxide, it is going to be a solid. What about this guy? Nitrogen dioxide. 
So just like carbon dioxide, this is a non-metal oxide, it's a gas. And oxygen, all of you know, it's a gas. Clear? So if you remember it in an interesting way, if you think what's happening in the equation, ah, it's breaking down into these guys, then it becomes easier to learn rather than, you know, just learning it, PbO plus NO2 plus O2. Okay? So please understand and learn these equations. Now, last step is balance, balance, balance. So let's go ahead and can you guys balance this one for me? All of you try it right now. So how do you quickly balance this one? Try the hit and trial. So in the hit and trial, you can see there's lead Pb. Okay, Pb is already balanced. Nitrogen is N1, but two times. So there's two nitrogen here. There's only one there. And oxygen seems a little difficult to balance. So again, in balancing, because it's present all over in the reactants, uh, in the products, right? So always try the element which is easiest to balance, right? Try to balance it first. Since lead is already balanced, we don't have to bother about it. So let's try nitrogen. Two here, only one there. So simple, let's multiply by two. Great. Now let's check, maybe it's already balanced the equation. So how many oxygen do you guys have on the left side? Please check carefully. Is it three? No, it's three multiplied by two because you have taken two nitrates, like two chocolates. So two nitrates you have taken. So three multiplied by two, six. Six oxygen here. Six oxygen. Not 60, six oxygen. How many oxygen on this side? 1 plus 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 plus 1, 5 plus 2, 7. Uh-oh. We have 7 here. We have 6 here. Not balanced. So what do we do? Less over here, more over here. How do you balance it? Always wherever it's less, you put some multiplier. Now don't be over generous and multiply by 10 or 20. What number should we multiply this one? Because left hand side, there's less oxygen. Right hand side, more oxygen, so we have to put some multiplier here. Let's start with a small multiplier like 2, the smallest number, right? Let's see if that helps. So see now again, lead is also disbalanced, no problem. So 2 lead here, so 2 times here. How many oxygen, this uh, nitrogen this side? 1 times 2, 2, but 2 times the whole thing, so 4 nitrogen. So if I want to get 4 here, I need to multiply this by 4. So see, we are doing step by step with the easy elements first so that the harder ones becomes easier to solve. Now let's see, how, what about the oxygen? 3 times 2, 6. 6 times 2, 12. So we have 12 oxygen this side. Please check if you can see 12. 3 times 2, 6 times 2, 12. And what do we have on the right side? 2 times 1, 2. 4 times 2, 8. 8 plus 2, 10. 10 plus 2, 12. So isn't that amazing that the difficult fellow got balanced by balancing the easy fellows. So we have 12 oxygen on both the sides. So see, we didn't have to do table. We don't have to do ABCD method. We just did our quick hit and trial in a simple systematic way, doing the easy ones first and leaving the hard, hard one for the last. That's the trick. You can easily balance these equations. Okay. And if you have been asked to write physical states, please write it. So what is the type of reaction here? One reactant, many products. What is the type of reaction? Again, decomposition, right? So this guy is again a decomposition reaction. And since it is caused by heat, sometimes it could be caused by light or electricity, right? So this is caused by heat. So we again say thermal decomposition. Yeah. So we have thermal decomposition reaction here. And one important thing also, in the reactants, many times we are asked to predict the observation. So for observation, you must always write the equation at least in rough. So what is the observation going to be here? That this is a white colored salt. So this, so you have to learn some colors. So white colored salt and lead oxide, do you guys know the color of lead oxide? It is a kind of a yellow color. So it leaves a yellow colored residue. So white changes to yellow. And nitrogen dioxide, you guys know the color? This forms reddish brown fumes. And oxygen is colorless, so not so interesting, right? So these are the colors you need to learn. So if they ask you, what will you predict the observations here? You'll say when you heat this white colored salt, it changes to yellow due to the formation of lead oxide and forms, uh, you see reddish brown fumes due to formation of nitrogen dioxide. 
usually oxygen we ignore because it is a colorless gas. Let's try another question. This famous equation, rusting of iron. You know that if you leave iron in air and moisture, it turns into rust. So what is the equation going to be? So you start off with iron. It combines with the oxygen in the air and the moisture, water, to form rust. What is the formula of rust? Rust is ferric oxide dot. Some water is joined over there. And XH2O. This guy is rust. Why do we write XH2O? Because it can be a variable, I think from 4 to 7 or 5 to 7, you know. It can have a variable number of water molecules. So we write XH2O. So that is our equation for rusting. Iron in the presence of air, oxygen in the air and moisture forms rust. Again, you can see combination reaction. Many reactants, only one product. So this is definitely combination. So let's go ahead and balance this equation, guys. How do you balance it? So iron is 2, only 1 here on the reactant, so 2 times here. H2O is x times over here, so let's balance that here. x H2O, or we have at least balanced the hydrogen. Oxygen is 3 here, so this, ox this part of oxygen is handled. x times x times is done. This is 3 and only 2 here. So what should we do? When you have just one last guy left and he's in element form, you can use the fraction trick. So what if I multiply this by 3 by 2, 1 and a half. So see the 2 and 2 will get cancelled. We are left with 3 oxygen on the left also. Can you guys see? So this equation looks complicated. But if you balance it with the fractions, it becomes very easy. 2 iron, 2 iron. 3 by 2 times 2. So 2, 2 cancels. 3 oxygen, 3 oxygen. X water, X water. Done. But we know in chemistry, fractions are not allowed. We should not leave the final equation with fractions. So how do you get, with that two, uh, get rid of that 2 denominator? Just multiply the whole equation with 2, just like we do in mathematics. So if you multiply by 2, this is going to be 4Fe, 3O2, and this will become 2XH2O. And this entire thing we multiply by 2. Done. So, such a complicated looking equation. First time you see it looks complicated. But if you do these simple steps, you can easily get the balanced equation very, very simply. Let's try another question. Write the chemical equation for electrolysis of water. First of all, what is the meaning of electrolysis? Giving an electric shock to water. So, passing electric current through water. So, water we know is H2O. And when you pass electricity through it, or we say electric current. So it's like passing energy, electrical energy. So just like heat can cause decomposition, electricity can decompose water. Because water, if you heat, it just starts boiling, right? So when we pass electric current, we can decompose it into hydrogen and oxygen gas. So we get these two gases. What is the physical state I should write for water here? What state should we write? Water. Should we write AQ or liquid? Aqueous or liquid? So important thing to remember here is something which is dissolved in water is written aqueous. But water itself is not dissolved in water. So we write here liquid. So please understand and remember why you see an L here. Because water is not dissolved in water. It's simply water and water we take in liquid form. We also add a little bit of acid sometimes to uh, or we add it here in electrolysis to make it a good conductor. Because water we know is not a good conductor for electricity, so this reaction won't happen nicely. So we put a bit of acid and do the electrolysis. Again guys, don't forget to balance this equation. This is pretty simple to balance. You just balance the oxygen by multiplying by 2 and hydrogen also you multiply by 2 here. Okay, what is the type of reaction here? So this is again a decomposition reaction. Because you have only one reactant but many products. The reactant is decomposing right, into these products. And it's not thermal decomposition. It's not happening due to heat. So we say this is electrolytic decomposition. Happening due to electricity. What does this setup look like? The setup looks like something like this. You have you know, water. So you take 
water and you add some acid over here and then you pass electric current using this using a battery so you have a positive end and a negative end so hydrogen actually is formed by hydrogen you know is electropositive so h it breaks water down into h plus and oh minus so water actually gets broken into these ions so the hydrogen uh, hydrogen ions go to the negative electron but hydrogen ions are cations so we say that they will go to the negative electrode which is called the cathode so this is the side where you see hydrogen being produced and the oh minus will go to the negative ions go to the positive electrode which is called the anode and they further break down to release oxygen so that's why we say hydrogen is formed at the cathode and oxygen is formed at the anode because the rule is cations go to the cathode anions go to the anode so this is another detail another interesting thing about this reaction is sometimes they ask in what ratio these gases are formed what is the volume ratio so it's very simple it just follows this balancing ratio which means if two volumes of this gas is formed or two liters this will form one liter two is to one so we write it usually rather than in liter we just write two volume one volume because it can be two liter one liter it can be 20 liters 10 liters it can be 2 ml 1 ml whatever unit of volume you take amount of hydrogen formed is twice the amount in volume of oxygen gas let's try another equation chemical equation for quick lime and nitric acid so quick lime is again a common name it is a common name for calcium oxide so quick lime is basically calcium oxide and then you have nitric acid so calcium oxide plus nitric acid is hno3 can you guys predict this reaction for me so nitric acid hno3 we definitely know this guy is an acid and metallic oxides like calcium oxide these guys are bases so this is a base when acid and base react what do they form salt and water only that's it so what's going to happen here this basically works like this like you break it down into its plus minus calcium oxide and you break this down into h plus and nitrate so what is going to happen calcium is going to attack the nitrate or plus minus join together it's going to form calcium nitrate salt calcium valency 2 nitrate 1 so calcium nitrate like that and plus water that's it so we have got our salt and water what is this type of reaction known as this is called neutralization neutralization reaction very famous acid plus base or base plus acid gives salt and water only nothing else and then what uh, last thing left simple thing you should balance your equation so nitrate two times there you go and hydrogen is and oxygen are also now balanced out let's try this next one write the equation of the reaction of iron and steam also write their physical states so what is iron iron is a metal fe metals are solid so let's write that plus steam what is steam steam is just water vapor so very simple we'll just write h2o and since it's in vapor form gas now what is the product here iron and steam are going to form some form of iron oxide the oxygen is going to combine with this now what iron oxide is it ferrous oxide or ferric oxide do you guys know which one is formed so this is a very interesting one because both a mixed oxide is formed so if you add these up you're going to get if you add up the atoms you're going to get fe3o4 1 fe plus 2 fe gives you fe3 1 oxygen plus 3 oxygen o4 so we are finally getting fe3o4 plus hydrogen so there you can see again iron is displacing the hydrogen from the steam to get to the oxide but it's a mixed oxide and this guy is known as the mixed oxide that is formed is known as 
ferrosophoric oxide or also known as triferric tetraoxide Fe3O4 and what will be the physical states here again we know the metal oxides are solids and hydrogen is of course a so this is an interesting case where you don't get a simple oxide you get Fe3O4 which is a mixture of ferrous, ferric, uh, ferrous oxide and ferric oxide and don't forget to balance it so you have got three iron and only one iron so we will multiply by three here and oxygen is four times so we multiply four here four H2 so we should do another four times here there you go we have our equation here of the reaction of iron and steam last one last question for you we have a equation here and you need to balance it ammonia plus chlorine gives n2 plus nh4cl so one again you can try hit and trial and see if you can balance it quickly or you might have to go for abcd method so you can try by a simple uh, hit and trial and try to see if you can balance this equation in a quick way or else go for ABCD. So let's see if we can balance it in a quick way with the normal method, right? Hit and trial method. So ammonia plus chlorine gives NHN2 plus NH4Cl. So here you can see you have three nitrogen you have three hydrogen okay so nothing seems to balance chlorine is only one so let's say uh, chlorine is two here so i think easiest to balance is chlorine let me multiply this by two so that way my chlorine is balanced now how many nitrogen and hydrogen i have here so nitrogen is or uh, hydrogen is eight but i have only three here okay so this is sort of getting complicated so if I want to balance it by fractions, then what do I need to do? 8 by 3. But now this is getting complicated. You have 8 by 3 nitrogen. You have 8 plus 2, 10 here. So you can see that balancing this one is not so easy. So maybe we can try with ABCD method. So what is ABCD method? You just put these coefficients A, B, C and D and try to solve for these coefficients to see what will you get here. So all of you try this out. So if you do this, let's say for all the elements you do the counting. So in ABCD method, if you don't know this method, you can watch my video. So you can, for every atom, you check the coefficients, how do they equate. So for nitrogen, how many nitrogen you have? A nitrogen on the left and you have 2C nitrogen here d nitrogen here so 2c plus d how many hydrogen you have on the left side three times a so we have a 3a is going to be equal to four times d 4d and if you want to equate the chlorine you have a 2b here and then you have d times chlorine so please equate uh, the coefficients these a b c d coefficients for all the elements now what you can do is which coefficient occurs the maximum times you take it as one so you can see d is occurring the maximum times so we are going to say let d equal to one so d equal to one what do we get so we are going to say let's say over here let d equal to one if d is one we have solved for b because b is going to be d by two which is half so b is going to be half a is going to be four by three of d so a becomes four by three and then what is C? So we can solve the first equation here. A is 4 by 3 equals 2C plus D, which we took as 1. So whichever equation occurs maximum times in the coefficients, you take as 1. If there are two coefficients like that, you can take any one as 1. So this is the technique where you start solving these equations. Now what do you get here? You solve for C. So we are getting 4 by 3 minus 1 equals 2C or I'm getting a 1 by 3 equals 2C. So C is 1 by 6. So have all of you got these things where D is 1, B is half just by solving the equation. So see, I've solved for all the coefficients. You plug it into the answer. So when you plug it into the answer, what are you going to get? A times ammonia. So A is 4 by 3. 4 by 3 ammonia. 
plus B times the chlorine, B is half, half Cl2 is going to give me C times N2, 1 by 6 times N2 plus D times 1 times ammonium chloride. But the problem is we have fractions here. So look at the LCM of all the denominator 3, 2 and 6. So multiply the entire equation by 6. So what are we going to get? So multiply by 6 and that's going to give me 8, um, 8 ammonia plus 3 chlorine becomes N2, 6 will cancel here plus 6 ammonium chloride. So see this balancing would have been quite complicated but using the ABCD technique we have balanced it in such a simple way just by converting the whole thing into maths equations. So this is the technique which I taught. If you guys missed the class, please search for the video on balancing with ABCD method. So hope you guys enjoyed this chemical equation revision class and you are much clearer on how to write chemical equations. Hope it is much simpler for you. So if you follow these tips and techniques, you are going to find chemistry much easier and do check out the other courses on our website. We have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for CBSE class 8, 9 and 10. So do share out our courses with your friends. For ICSE students also we have physics, chemistry, biology, maths for classes 8, 9 and 10. And if you want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding and we have physics and chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE which is the international board. So do share out our courses with your friends. Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So stay connected with Manucha Academy and keep learning.